As we know, late last night AMD had their GDC 2016 Capsaicin conference, which they revealed a bunch of stuff, and if you want to see Paul's overview that he did at the time of the conference late last night, I will link that in the description below this video. But I want to focus on one thing that he did mention, but there is more information now, and that is the Ceylon Q, which is an all-in-one AR and VR headset. And yes, that means virtual reality and augmented reality in a single headset, and according to tech radar it is going to be a spatially aware hybrid headset which was created in collab with a new tech startup by the name of Sulon Technologies. Now what makes this even more interesting as, is that in the demo that we saw at GDC the headset was not plugged into anything it was completely untethered so there was no PC powering it there wasn't a console powering it it was all internally powered using AMD's technology and of course Liquid VR as well. Now some of the stuff that Paul um, did not have access to last night is some techy stuff like the resolution. The Ceylon Q will have a 2560 by 1440 resolution, 90 hertz refresh rate and an 110 degree FOV, all of which is going to be powered by an AMD FX 8800P processor Radeon R7 graphics as well as 8 gigs of memory and a 256 gigs solid state drive. And all of this is packed into a hard drive side box that sits at the back of the device. So it's all untethered internal to the device, which is really interesting. Now they have yet to announce the price tag or an exact re release date for the Sulon Q, other than they saying that they're targeting a mid-2016 launch. I have to say, this sounds really interesting. Of course, we've got virtual reality, with Oculus and Vive and PlayStation VR and then we've got HoloLens with AR from Microsoft on the other side and now in the middle we have the Ceylon Q from AMD which has both worlds and not tethered to any PC. It's going to be interesting to see how it fares power and performance wise in comparison to both sides of the sort of virtual reality battle that's going to be happening of course at the higher end you've got the oculus and the vive and then you've got the playstation vr and then of course on the other side you've got the hololens and it's going to be really interesting to see where the ceylon q actually falls in it already beats the oculus and the vive's resolution with this 2560 by 1440 but does not have a custom OS. It has Windows 10 pre-installed, uh, pre-installed rather, and allows any app within the OS to broadcast itself within the mixed reality environment. So I have to say I'm really intrigued. I actually didn't imagine that we would be getting untethered VR at this early stage, but AMD are definitely upping their game, and it's going to be interesting to see how exactly it pans out, and of course the price is going to be a key factor here, as that of course is quite a high barrier to entry with both the Vive and the Oculus currently. Of course we don't know how much the HoloLens consumer version or the PlayStation VR is going to cost so it's going to be really key to see how much AMD is going to charge. If it truly is coming out this year we should be finding out before too long but of course that's pure speculation on my part. So do let me know your thoughts as I said Paul had to discussed already more about AMD's GDC conference. I just wanted to talk about the Sulon Q as there's more information available since last night and just wanted to yeah, share my excitement because it sounds really interesting and I can't I'm, I have I can't help being a little bit excited for it. So do let me know your thoughts and opinions. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.